Folks, I'm excited for our next two guests. I'm introducing Eric Williams, Rams beat reporter for Sports Illustrated, and Kevin Modesti, Rams beat reporter for the Southern California News Group. Kevin is Gilbert's co-worker with the OC Register, and uh, obviously, Eric is mine. How are you guys doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, Fernando. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to the draft on, on Thursday um, and, and seeing where these players go. And, and, and again, thanks for, for having me on. Yeah, same here. Um, it, it's maybe it's a slower process for me to gather excitement for the draft. Uh, you know, one of us on this call is old enough to remember the days before the draft was televised, before it was, uh, it, it, you know, it was so successfully hyped by <laughs> the NFL. Uh, I looked up a story I wrote more than 20 years ago uh, with a, a quote from somebody saying that the NFL draft is the most popular non-event in sports and this wasn't some football hating cynic saying it it was george young the great <laughs> nfl uh, uh, front wow. man of, of many generations so uh, I, I don't know that there's anybody in the nfl who would utter that sentence now yeah no and it's definitely like you guys are saying it's hyped it gets exciting uh eric fans know you uh charger fans know you they you used to cover the chargers for many years Tell us a little bit about what it's like covering the team in Thousand Oaks and uh, the Crosstown rival and the LA Rams and kind of what your transition's been like. Yeah, you know, it's been fun and it's been unique and different, you know, being able to cover both teams in the Los Angeles market. Obviously, the two teams do things a little bit differently, both when it comes to to football and non-football operations. And it's it's been interesting to kind of to see those differences and approaches. I think both approaches can be successful. I, I think we've seen that that both approaches can be successful because both the Rams and Chargers have had success in terms of wins in the market. Um, but I also think because of the ultra competitive nature of the market, you know, it's the city of champions. You have the Dodgers and all the success they've had, uh, obviously, you know, winning a title and then the Lakers winning a title as well. And so both the Rams and Chargers are trying to carve out a niche in the market and, and, and figure out new unique ways of doing that. And I think we've seen that over the past year, obviously lately with the, the Rams and their draft house, you know, trying to get some attention, you know, in this market. Um, so I think you just have to be innovative and, 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 and think outside the box. And I think both organizations have done that. Uh, Erica, we, we miss you with the chargers, but uh, you know, you're doing big things with the Rams and you kind of, you know, joining now with Kevin Modesti. So you guys are kind of doing big things over there. And I kind of like this SI, SCNG kind of, you know, cross promotion here. So thank you for being on. And, and Kevin, you know, I'll go to you now. You know, I think you're okay with dating yourself a little bit. You're kind of giving some back in the day stories. So I'll just kind of say, you've done it all, Kevin. You used to cover MOB baseball. I think you might be a Hall of Fame voter for, for MOB as well. But then you went to the news side. Spent a couple of years, you know, covering a, a city stuff, maybe, maybe in politics. And then you're back with the NFL B covering the Rams. How is kind of that long path for you in being an NFL B writer? One of those versatile guys from UCLA. I'm the Demetric Felton of the, <laughs> of the local. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's been, it's been fascinating to get back to sports, which is something I wanted after about 10 years of being away, covering politics in various ways. Nothing against covering politics. It's fascinating. Um, but uh, I, I felt like sports writing was kind of in my blood, and I wanted to do it again before um, either I or the newspaper <laughs> uh, and before one, uh, you know. Um, so I, and the Rams was the beat that was available uh, at the time. And, uh, and I jumped on it. It's been, it's been great. I, you know, yeah, I'm a, un unashamedly somebody who goes back to uh, following the Rams as a fan, uh, about 50 years. So, um, to, uh, to, to, it, it, it took me a long time, I guess, to, uh, uh kind of get inside it and see how it works, but, uh, there's nothing quite like the NFL love it or, or hate the way uh, the way it works. It's uh, it's an endlessly fascinating operation. Before we we jump and talk about Rams, we have to ask both of you. And uh, Kevin, I'll start with you. The Chargers' new head coach is Brandon Staley. You guys covered him with the Rams. He was defensive coordinator. What what should Charger fans expect, and what are they getting from uh, Brandon Staley as their new 
head coach? Well, you know, when uh, it became evident that the Rams were exceeding expectations last season, I wrote a story listing proposing six reasons for it. And number one was Brandon Staley uh, and the way he, uh, he built that defense, obviously around Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, but, uh, but, but uh, using the versatility of other guys, getting the most out of Leonard Floyd and the secondary. Um, I, I, I can't say I wasn't surprised that he moved up to a head coaching job quite this fast, but, but I certainly wasn't surprised if he interviewed really well uh, whatever teams he talked with, um, because I was always impressed with his communication skills, um, especially his ability to find a Lakers analogy for <laughs> any situation to explain a, a, a player's role or value. Uh, Eric? Uh, yeah, just to co-sign on what Kevin is saying, um, he certainly has a commanding presence. You guys have covered Gus Bradley, defensive coordinator that for the Chargers now, for the Raiders. I compare him to Gus in terms of his ability to just be charismatic, uh, always upbeat, positive. Um, and I think that carries some weight in the locker room when you can kind of be like that on a daily basis and get your guys going. Um, the second word to me that is, is innovation. Um, I don't think that Staley was worried about what players can't do. He's more concerned about what they can do. And, and like Kevin said, kind of putting those players in the right position so they can perform to their best. And I certainly think that you're going to see that with the Chargers. You know, don't get too caught up in the scheme in terms of what he did with the Rams because they had two unique players in Aaron Donald uh, and Jalen Ramsey. Certainly he's going to build around Derwin and Joey and what they do best. But um, I don't think it's, it's about scheme with him. I think it's just about personnel, innovation, finding out what guys do best, and then giving – the franchise energy and enthusiasm moving, moving forward. Fernando, I got a confession to make because you gave me credit for the Brandon Staley hire because I was saying you got to hire this guy, Brandon Staley, but it was Kevin who kind of pointed me to the Brandon Staley's direction telling me about, you know, his resume track record, everything Eric just said as well. And I started thinking, okay, Brandon Staley might be the guy for the Chargers. And I, and I kind of took the credit. I wrote a story about it. Fernando thinks I, I was the one, you know, ahead of the, the, the curve, but it wasn't, it was Kevin. But Kevin, uh, we like to do a lot of combo stories. We like to kind of, you know, pick our brains and, 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 you know, what are the Rams doing? What are the Chargers doing? We did a combo story on um, cornerback prospects in the NFL draft because the Rams need a cornerback, the Chargers need a cornerback as well. The Rams are not picking into the second round. I think pick number 57, Kevin. But do you think cornerback is a bet? Like not, not the best, but the biggest need for the Rams is cornerback a big hole for them because they lost a lot in, the, in free agency. You think that's the biggest need? And, who are some names out there if, if it is kind of their top uh, need for, for the Rams? Well, it's one of the top needs. I mean, you know, the Rams lost free agents at virtually every position group, which is a, a, a no mean trick. Um, and they're hard to forecast draft wise. Um, you know, as you said, no first round pick from what was the last one 2016 Jared uh, Goff. Won't have another one and yeah Jared Goff uh, and even that wasn't their own <laughs> first rounder uh, <laughs> they won't have another one until 24 I think um, they uh, you know they do a lot of their best work in the late rounds they uh, most often make trades during the um, during the draft uh, and uh, the way they're approaching scouting now uh, gives them a lot of confidence in their uh, in, in their knowledge of late round uh, uh, prospects, um, uh, and uh, uh, so with that said, you know, making the point that they're they're hard to forecast. Yeah, I think you know a cornerback to replace uh, the depth and the talent that they lost when Troy Hill uh, left as a free agent. That's one of the the big needs, and uh, you know if you said who's the who's the best you could maybe dream of of getting uh, I wrote down Asante Samuel uh, to answer my own question you know second generation uh, pro uh, from Florida State but uh, there's a you know of course a lot of a lot of corners out there so uh, um, but uh, 
you know, we'll probably get to it. I would think center would be another position uh, inside and outside linebacker, potentially. I think they could find uh, a wide receiver of a type that will help them. And, uh, you know, a, a wide receiver or running back who, who doubles or even singles as a punt and kick returner would be, uh, would be especially useful. But, uh, you know, I, I, I could see them doing something at, at uh, almost every position, limited by the fact that they only have six picks at this point. Eric, um, doubling down on what Kevin said, you wrote an article today on SI uh, Rams uh, about the center position. Do you feel like that's the? Do you feel like that's one of the most important spots that they need? Uh, they need to single. I mean, we saw it with the Chargers when Mike Pouncey went down. The Chargers had a, a huge need for that. Do you feel like it's kind of the same thing with the Rams? They need a, a, a good center moving forward. Yeah, I mean, I agree with a lot of what Kevin said. I do think they have needs at a lot of different positions, which is interesting because you know a lot of people believe that this roster has enough talent to win a Super Bowl, and yet they have all these needs to fill going into the draft, but. Uh, for me, yeah, it starts at center. You know, when you lose a guy like Austin Blythe, that was kind of their their anchor of that offensive line, and they let him go for the amount of money that he made. I mean, one year, nine hundred ninety thousand guaranteed. So that that tells me that they they were ready to move on from from Austin Blythe, and they either felt they had an answer on the roster, and 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 Brandon Allen or, or other guys potentially or they like the the draft enough to go ahead and say hey we can get our our center of the future in this year's draft which has a deep pool of of talent at the center position um, obviously drew Dahlman makes a lot of sense because they have kevin carberry as their offensive line coach who coached at stanford coach drew Dahlman knows him well drew Dahlman has been playing in the zone scheme since high school um, and his dad, Chris Dahlman, was an offensive line coach uh, for the Atlanta Falcons and actually coached under uh, a guy named uh, uh, Gibbs, who is, is the guy that's the, considered the godfather of the zone running game. So he has a long lineage of, of playing in that scheme. And oh, by the way, the Rams run the zone running scheme. So he could seem like he could come in and hit the ground running as a guy that uh, they could draft in the second or third round. And, and as you mentioned, I think that center is – perhaps the second or third most important uh, spot on the offense. Obviously, it starts with quarterback, but basically your center is the quarterback of the offensive line, and you have a new quarterback coming in, learning a new scheme. You're going to look like going to start a new center as well. So having those guys on the same page, making sure that they're able to communicate effectively is going to be important. Gilbert, you heard that. They said quarterback. Get, take take uh, it to uh, him. Take it to him. You I know, we, him. We haven't asked him for the quarterback position just yet. And I know Eric, you know, wants to move on from Jared Goff. So I won't ask you about Jared Goff anymore, Eric. Let's go to the future, <laughs> Kevin and Eric. How about Matthew Stafford? We haven't brought up his name yet. And Eric, you mentioned Super Bowl contenders. So I ask you both, is Matthew Stafford the answer to the problems? Are they going back to the Super Bowl? Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, they had that bad offensive outing against the Patriots in Atlanta. You know, it didn't work out for Jared Goff. Todd Gurley went downhill from there. But now they threw all their chips back in the table with Matthew Stafford. So Kevin or Eric, both of you guys answer this question. Are they Super Bowl contenders with Matthew Stafford? Well, I'll let Kevin go first. <laughs> I don't think that move alone gets them over the hump and into the and into SoFi Stadium for the Super Bowl. Um, you know, uh, some other things have to have to happen. Um, uh, it, it's just a curious thing. Uh, that you go from a quarterback who did help you to a Super Bowl, who earned a couple of Pro Bowl spots, um, and of course who you you know guaranteed 110 million dollars to a couple of years ago, um, and and you acquire as your savior <laughs> a guy who hasn't won a uh, a playoff game. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, the, um, a, a Rams executive the other day was talking about how decorated he is, presumably meaning he's won lots of honors and awards. He's a, he's a one-time Pro Bowler, right? Now, uh, no doubt <laughs> he will have more weapons with the LA Rams than he did with the Detroit Lions and a better chance to, to win, but it's a test of the Rams' ability to perceive that. 
right? Um, uh, I mean, that's what a draft is about, and that's what acquisitions are about, is uh, assessing talent and projecting what it can do in a different circumstance, your circumstance. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, no doubt. I mean, you're, you're not only everything that you mentioned, Kevin, but this guy's 33 years old. The guy that you got rid of is 27. So he's actually six years older than, than the guy that was limiting your, your offense. Um, you can't deny the arm talent of Matthew Stafford. I mean, he, he throws the ball over the place. Um, he's a little bit better mover physically than, than Jared was. But there's an immense amount of pressure on Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay, who is really the person that dictated this, this thing getting done, to, to win. And, and not just win, but win a Super Bowl. Um, that's why they made the move. Um, is he believed that Jared had, had a limit in terms of his ceiling, in terms of where he could lead this team and what they could do on offense, and that Stafford's ceiling was higher um, and that he would be more effective in this offense. And so we'll see. I agree with Kevin. I mean, we've mentioned all the needs that they have in this roster. It's not just Matthew Stafford. They need more playmakers on offense. They have to acknowledge that. They, they need somebody that can stretch the field. I mean, this team finished in the bottom third, in plays of 20 more yards, plays of 40 more yards, and average play per game. That wasn't just Jared. That was that was a lot of other stuff as well, including the play caller, um, you know, who has to perform better on game days. So it's a lot of things that need, need to add up for this team to, to be where they want to be, which is hosting the Super Bowl at SoFi in 2022. And I'm interested to, to see what it looks like, you know, starting when training camp starts in, in July or August. Before we let you guys go, we've learned a lot today. I have to ask you guys something. And Gilbert, I'm, I'm bringing something out of left field because I, I love how I love going at Eric a little bit. I love having fun with him. But a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm off the hook. No, no, no. You're gonna answer this too. Don't you? No, no one's off the hook. Tuesday, you guys are doing something very fun. You guys are you guys are going on a special field trip to Malibu to go check out where the Rams are gonna draft. That's all the flash and everything that's a flash that you guys get to go to number one how excited are you for it and two eric this is for you did you even know who rebel wilson was before you uh, before today when they released that i have watched movies in the 21st century so yeah i knew who rebel wilson <laughs> i'm excited for tuesday i'm i'm bringing my speedos and my, my goggles i'm gonna get some laps in you Coconut know oil. hang out at the infinity pool Coconut oil. Um, I'm, I'm I'm pretty excited, Kevin. You know, I yeah, I'm excited to uh, to see the the draft house. Uh, we're we're both guilty of leaving off the sponsor's name <laughs> intentionally. Well, we come from a certain generation, Kevin, where we don't necessarily have that, right? right. <laughs> That's right. Um, I'm more excited to actually have a chance to talk with Les Snead and uh, and and uh, uh, and Sean McVay for the first time and least a month i think you chargers writers have uh, talked with your coach um at least twice since the last time we got any uh, anything direct so um we know they're we know they're busy but it'll be good after this long period of writing about the nfl draft um uh through our uh, you know our our knowledge and perspective and context um to actually be able to hear what they say uh, about their intentions and to try to parse, <laughs> try to interpret um, what they might have in mind uh, starting on Thursday. So or, is, on Friday in their case, sorry. Kevin, so, so is Sean McVay doing this, uh, this uh, press conference by poolside, shirtless and drinks? What's going on here? <laughs> we, we've seen that um, and, and, and I hope not. Um, but <laughs> but if there's a sponsor for it, I'm sure that <laughs> you guys are going to have a lot of fun. I can't wait to see uh, the draft party frat house stories that you guys are going to release on Wednesday because that's how exciting it's going to be. Make sure everybody follow both Kevin and Eric's work. It's great work. They're two veterans in this league who I've I've learned a lot from Eric and I know Gilbert's learned a lot from Kevin. So we're truly grateful for both of you for helping us out through uh, through our journeys. And uh, everybody, go follow both of them on social media. Go follow both of their uh, stories. Kevin, what, what Twitter handle? Oh, it's uh, at Kevin Modesti. Uh, last name is M-O-D-E-S-T-I. And then Eric? 
at Eric underscore D underscore Williams. Sorry, I have to make it hard, but there's a lot of Eric Williams out there. Uh, so Eric underscore D underscore Williams. There's only one in our heart, though. It's Eric D. Williams. So we appreciate you guys for joining us. 